Director John Melvin. And uh, then we'll have the Medical Director for the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, Dr. Stephen Mesner. Those will be the four speakers. Standing with them will be U.S. Attorney B.J. Pack, Northern District of Georgia, U.S. Marshal Michael Yeager, also in the Northern District of Georgia, U.S. Marshal uh, John Kerry Pittick from the Middle District of Georgia, uh, Georgia Department of Family and Children's Services, Deputy Executive Director Chris Hempfling, and FBI Acting Special Agent in Charge Phil Whistler. So those will be the folks standing up here on the dais, and the first four will be speaking. Okay, and that's the two-minute warning. All right, everybody ready to get started? Very good. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming today. I'm excited, very excited, because we have some good news. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's about one of our missions that we're very proud of, but it's also one of those missions that we wish we didn't have, in a sense. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But this is Operation Not Forgotten, and obviously you can uh, take the name of that operation and understand why we're here today. Uh, this is uh, an operation that uh, was launched uh, in the city of Atlanta, in the state of Georgia, uh, by the United States Marshal Service Missing Child Unit, along with the Southeast Regional Fugitive Task Force. And we can't do, uh, we could not have been as successful as I think we've been with this particular mission without the help of the uh, other folks and the other agencies involved. Uh, today, let me first introduce uh, some of the folks that are standing around me here. First, we have the Georgia Attorney General, uh, Chris Carr. Uh, I almost confused him with my boss earlier this, today, uh, United States Attorney General William Barr, but this is Carr, not Barr. Uh, thank you for coming, sir. Uh, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation Assistant Director John Melvin is here with us. Uh, United States Attorney B.J. Pack is here with me, behind me here. Uh, United States Marshal Michael Yeager is here as well. United States Marshal uh, John Biddick from the Middle District of Georgia is here. Um, the Georgia Department of Family and Children's Services Deputy Executive Director Chris Hempfling yes, is with us today. Uh, Ch Children's Health Care of Atlanta Medical Director, Dr. Stephen Messner, is behind me. Thank you, Doctor, for coming. Uh, let me say a few words, and then uh, Attorney General Carr will say a few words, uh, and then uh, the uh, uh, GBI Assistant Director, John Melvin, will speak, and then after him, uh, Dr. Messner with the Children's Health Care of Atlanta will say a few words as well. So why are we here? We're here because we conducted an operation, as I said, in this geography. Uh, we recovered 26 missing and endangered children, and we safely located an additional 13, uh, and we arrested nine criminals that are involved or were involved uh, with, with these missing children. In the process, we cleared uh, 26 arrest warrants, and we filed additional charges for alleged crimes related to sex trafficking. A parental kidnapping, registered sex offender violations, drugs and weapons possession, and custodial interference. Uh, some of the names, and this is not all of them, but uh, some of the defendants, uh, there's one Kirk Waters, as an example. He was arrested for being in the comp while in the company of one of our recovered children. He was charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. He's incarcerated. His bond has been denied. Zachary Bailey, is another name. He was arrested and charged with sex trafficking of a juvenile, among other alleged crimes. He's also incarcerated. 
And the third name that I'll mention here, as I said, there are others. The third name is Stanson Causey. He was arrested for a probation violation. Uh, the, the original charge was child molestation. He is now also incarcerated. Now, a lot of people contributed to this operation, uh, without whom this operation would not be, have been successful. I want to personally thank Commander Jim Joyner, who I can see back, back behind you there, uh, Deputy Commander Dennis Durando, uh, and uh, the Missing Child Unit Chief. Uh, she's smiling behind her math, mask, uh, Chief uh, Darby Kirby. Uh, these were all uh, super folks who were instrumental in carrying out this operation, in conducting the training, the planning, and then the actual operation itself uh, being done in a truly, truly noble, professional, and an outstanding way. I'm, I'm very proud of what they were able to accomplish uh, in, in the short time that we were on this operation. Now, as, as successful as this operation was, there is a harsh reality here, though. And the harsh reality is, well, gee, why are we doing this in the first place? Why do we have missing, endangered children? Uh, the stats are that in every, in every 40 seconds, there is a child abducted in the United States, every 40 seconds. And so I kind of like to keep the math uh, uh, straightforward. I'll round that up just for grins here today and call it every 60 seconds. That means that every minute that I speak, one child is abducted in the United States of America. According to the FBI stats, uh, they gather stats from around the country that are reported to them. Uh, there are over 421,000 missing children uh, that are reported uh, as, as I stand here now. Of those reported, 90%, 91% actually, are considered endangered runaways. Now you can do the math, that's about 360,000 endangered children uh, in, in this country. And of that 360,000, one in six of them, now do the math again, that's 60,000, is likely to become a victim of sex trafficking. 60,000, that's unacceptable. Now these are not children that are in some faraway land. Uh, these are uh, children that are not, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're not somebody else's kids, right? I have children, I'm sure many of you do as well. Uh, these are not my kids, right? And these are not your kids, but it, actually they are our kids when it's all said and done. And so we have to accept them as our kids because they are America's children and they are kids that we need to go and find. Uh, right here in Atlanta, approximately 300 young girls are lured into sex trafficking every month. Now, you can do the math on that as well. Now, that's something that we need, to, we need to pay attention to and to work harder on, I believe. So this is a, prior, a priority of the United States Marshal Service. Uh, we do a lot of things. As you know, you're, you're standing here in a building uh, that's one of eight regional fugitive task forces around the United States. We are responsible for bringing to justice about 100,000 fugitives every year, 100,000 in buildings and with people that are engaged in the many deaths that you have your cameras sitting around as, as I talk here. Okay. But I'll tell you, um, we're very proud of bringing in fugitives, no doubt about it. But this operation of going and rescuing children, in my view, is far, far, far more important. The numbers are not nearly the 100,000 uh, when we talk about missing children uh, that we are able to recover. Uh, but one missing child uh, is worth thousands in my mind of, of fugitives that we go out and get. So we have a number of partners uh, that we work with here. Um, and uh, I'm going to name them in a minute just to make sure that everyone gets the, gets the proper credit uh, that's due because I don't believe that my agency is due any credit whatsoever uh, when it comes to this particular mission. Yeah, we were here, we we're part of the leadership and the planning and the training and the funding and all of that, but we can't do it without the partners that we have uh, to help us get through these things. So our mission uh, in the Marshall Service with respect to missing children is a national mission. Uh, there are United States Marshals in 94 different districts around the country and in the American territories, so we have a presence virtually everywhere. What I'd like to see is that we have a missing child mission virtually everywhere as well so that we can help to bring these, these many, many thousands of missing children home. 
Uh, since 2005, we've recovered uh, uh, nearly 2,000 missing children in the, in the Marshal Service. Uh, these fit in a particular category. I keep using the term uh, missing endangered children. Uh, that means something to us. These are children that are in an environment where they are, act they, they are the victims of a violent crime or they are in an environment where there are certain factors that are being brought to bear uh, that makes them endangered. These are, they're the, they're the subjects of sexual assaults, uh, they're the subjects of sex trafficking, molestation, and things of that sort, and then there are other factors that we also look at as well. So, uh, so it's, it's a big mission um, uh, when it's all said and done. There are big numbers and there are plenty, there's plenty of work to go around for law enforcement agencies. Some of our partners, I said I'd mention those, uh, so, so we'll make sure we understand who all, and who all may be involved here. Uh, first, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, uh, which has its offices in, Alex, in, in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, but they work cases uh, all over the country and in many cases all over the world uh, with their partnership with the FBI and with the United States Marshal Service. Uh, we're able to do some really, really good things with them. Here in Atlanta, we've had the State of Georgia Attorney General's Office, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation's Missing Child Recovery Unit, the Georgia Department of Families and Children's Services, as I said, the FBI, uh, and, the, and its Metro Atlanta Child Explo Exploitation Task Force, and a number of local law enforcement agencies from Atlanta and Macon, Georgia. Now, the 26 uh, kids who were rescued during Operation Not Forgotten, um, th these rescues were a direct result of the collaboration among uh, many agencies, uh, particularly the ones I mentioned. Uh, I want to say again that these are the most at-risk and challenging recovery cases in the area. Okay? You can think of the U.S. Marshal Service as being expert, I think the best, at finding people anywhere in the world. Uh, these particular particular cases finding children are equally difficult and so the expertise that I think we can bring to bear is necessary uh, for us to uh, uh, achieve the success that we've achieved uh, in this these kinds of missions now we are also conducting these missions in other cities around the country I'll give you an example here we have operation safety net uh, which is ongoing as we speak uh, in Cleveland uh, so far there, uh, during the few weeks of operations, we've rec recovered 15 missing children, and we've arrested at least two individuals and seized a number of weapons associated with those individuals. There is an operation ongoing in the city of New Orleans. Uh, it's called Operation Summer Rescue. Uh, that one's kicking off, and we expect to see similar successes in that area. My agency is committed to this mission. Finding missing children uh, has to be among our highest priorities. Uh, my message to the missing children and their families is very simple, and that is the way we look at uh, fugitives. Uh, we will never stop looking for you. That's my message. Okay? There is no more meaningful work that law enforcement does than rescuing children. Our children are not for sale, and they are not ever forgotten. And so uh, with that, I'm going to uh, turn over the podium uh, to the Georgia Attorney General, uh, Chris Carr. Director Washington, thank you so much for being here. Your presence uh, means a great deal, and we are so grateful for you taking the time to be in Atlanta today with us and for the partnership uh, in this uh, particular operation. And I, too, I want to thank everybody that's been a part of this. So many different agencies, uh, so many different folks working together, and it truly makes a difference. I do want to say a, a special thanks to the, uh, our, the head of our prosecutions division, John Fowler, and to the head of our uh, human trafficking unit, Hannah Palmquist, and their entire team. This unit is new for our office. It is a first of its kind. Uh, in state history and when we launched we had a high expectations for the team and they continue to exceed them and we could not be more proud of the work that they are doing each and every day 
and we're so proud of the work that we are doing with our partners like the U.S. Marshal Service, the GBI, and those that are standing up on the podium today. To date, our unit has placed 18 victims of domestic minor sex trafficking in rehabilitation services and centers such as the state's Receiving Hope Center, which is operated by Wellspring Living. We've worked cases in 11 Georgia counties. We have indicted five traffickers with eight additional ongoing investigations. Operation Not Forgotten was designed to locate and recover missing and endangered children in Georgia and beyond, including some who were known to be victims of sex trafficking. As a result of this operation, our office has assisted the U.S. Marshal Service and the GBI in placing additional victims in rehabilitation centers, and to date we have developed three new cases with multiple trafficking suspects. We often get asked by the media about the statistics behind trafficking, and they're not so easy to come by. Sex trafficking can be in many ways a hidden crime, one that lives in the shadows. I always go back to the fact that if we can save one child from a life of abuse or sex trafficking, we've done our job. And this operation did that for many, many children. Children who were not given a fair shake to begin with, children who maybe would have fallen through the cracks had it not been for the dedicated efforts of law enforcement, law enforcement officials that worked this operation. And the work that these men and women did during these two weeks will be life-changing for these young children. And I cannot praise them enough for a job well done. Our human trafficking unit's main role in this type of operation is to assist throughout, help coordinate services for victims, and ensure that any criminals in the, involved in the abuse or trafficking of these children are held accountable for their despicable actions. Our prosecutors work with investigators to identify the signs of domestic minor sex trafficking and what we need from the scene in order to build strong cases against buyers and traffickers. Our criminal analyst and criminal investigator both aid their counterparts throughout the entire process, and our victim advocate acts as the linchpin between the victims and rehabilitative services. We're lucky in Georgia to have great partners in the recovery space who truly can step in when these operations conclude and carry the torch on providing rehabilitation services. I also want to thank Governor Brian Kemp and First Lady Marty Kemp for ensuring that we had the resources in order to do this through our Human Trafficking Prosecutions Unit. And I also have to commend uh, our President and the Administration for the resources that they have provided as we fight human trafficking. So I want to thank again the partners that we've had at the U.S. Marshal Service for including us as a partner from the early stages. I cannot say enough about Operation Not Forgotten and the men and women behind it. And I believe that the relationships forged uh, as a result of this operation will allow us to save more children and put more buyers and traffickers behind bars. How many lives that we have uh, saved and will have a new and fresh start is how we will measure success. And with that, I will turn it over to Assistant Director of the GBI, John Melvin. Evil exists, and to address it requires leadership that will identify it, call it out, and deploy the necessary resources to end the problem and clean up the mess. To address it requires agents and foot soldiers and prosecutors that are willing to take the fight to the enemy. That is why I'm so thankful for the leadership of the Trump administration on the federal level, as well as Director Washington, Attorney B.J. Pack, and our brethren at the FBI. And on the state level, I'm very thankful for the leadership of Governor Kemp Director Reynolds, as well as Attorney General Chris Carr. Evil exists, and it requires the coordinated partnerships to maximize our impact against it. So I want to thank every agent, every marshal, every member of the Bureau, the FBI, and every local agent that participated in fighting this evil. And whether you're behind a keyboard or you're on the street for a takedown, I want you to know that you made a difference. I want to say thank you to our leadership also for recognizing the need for a holistic approach as we fight evil. For not only did we take them down, but we're also partnering with Wellspring as well as CHOA to clean up the mess. CHOA and Wellspring are really providing a ministry 
to the harmed souls that this evil has caused. I'm grateful for our leadership and our agents, the members of the GBI like Debbie Garner and our SEAC unit who helped track them down. I'm thankful for the U.S. Marshal's Office and Marshal Yeager who allowed us to participate in this effort. I want you all to continue to pray for Hannah Palmquist, who's the head of the Human Trafficking Unit at the AG's office, as well as John Fowler, because we're only halfway to the gold line. We need to hold these perpetrators accountable, and we need to make sure that they are incarcerated so that they will never again perpetrate their evil against the children of the state of Georgia. Thank you. I want to say thank you again to Dr. Mesner and to those that are engaging in the ministry to help, har help our children get better. May God bless you all. I hate to say this, but uh, I will anyway. <laughs> Dr. Mesner was a little reluctant to speak uh, with you today, uh, not because uh, uh, he didn't have anything to say, but because he obviously is a person who is uh, rather meek. Uh, and uh, but, but the contributions made, you, when you ask yourself the question, so we've got the U.S. Marshals with guns and badges, you know, we've got the Attorney General with the prosecutors, prosecutions and prosecutors. We've got GBI with, again, guns and badges. But what happens to the children after that? You know, what happens after they're rescued? Well, Dr. Mesner is going to talk to you uh, briefly about, uh, about what, that, what that process is. It's very important to understand that there is a network there uh, that can be depended upon, but we can't do it without people like Dr. Mesner and his organization. Yeah, thank you very much. So I'm Steve Messner. I'm one of the child abuse pediatricians at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. I'm the medical director of the Stephanie V. Blank Center for Safe and Healthy Children. I'd like to thank all of you for allowing us to participate in this um, operation. So it's really important for these children that once they're recovered that we can start the healing process. And by involving us at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, we're able to start that process right from the get-go. So on behalf of all the children who are recovered, I'd like to thank all of you for your efforts that have been put forward. So thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. All right, with that, uh, I think that's all who volunteered to speak today uh, at, at the conference, but everybody, you see the people here who are uh, present to answer any questions you might have in addition to myself. So with that, we'll open it to questions. What are some of the locations where the arrests were made? Anybody help with that? Specific locations? In Atlanta. Just a second. We've. I got the experts over here who know all the details. Come on up. Uh, Josue Rivera, ma'am, uh, with the U.S. Marshal Service. Uh, the, we, we have locations all over the, uh, the state. Uh, as far as Atlanta, you're looking at the, the surrounding counties, Gwinnett, Fulton, Clayton, uh, as far north as uh, uh, Forsyth County, uh, I, I'd, I'd have, it's probably about 20 counties total in the state of Georgia. So I, I'd have to. Can you give us an address? Say again. The address of the property. No. What do you mean address? When you picked up these. I, th there's. 39 recoveries. I mean, I'd have to go back and, and look through there. But yeah, if, if that's really important to you, we can we can give you what we can give you. Just a few yeah. locations, um, just for video purposes. Right. Um, even if it's uh, streets. Yes, we'll provide that to you. Thank you. Yeah. Most of these locations, hotels, motels, or where? Uh, various locations. There were some motels uh, where some children were being uh, sex trafficked. Um, some were residences, apartment complexes. Uh, it, they ran, they ran from motels to apartment complexes. Yeah, there, there's no particular formula for this. It's just like where you might live. It's all said and done. Um, thank you. Yeah. Don't go too far. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me just add before, before you, the next question. The, the way these things normally happen is the task force will meet with the various parties involved and discuss uh, the, the possible uh, names because there are organizations who know uh, the names of the people that we need to go look for. Uh, we, these, as, as things go, it, it's, it becomes a typical investigation where people do 
what some people call gumshoe work. They will take data and start looking uh, as to where people might be and then get out and actually go, f go find the folks that, that are involved. Yes, ma'am. Um, of the 39, you've got 13 who just had these safe location of. So what happens with them? What kind of does that safe location mean, and, and what does their kind of future look like? What's that situation? Yeah, as I understand it, and again, we've got experts here. As I understand it, that particular 13, these were children that law enforcement felt that uh, they sort of needed a health and welfare check, if you will, because we were just not certain as to what their current conditions were. So someone was sent to find them. So we had to use our expertise to actually locate them first and then go verify as to whether or not they were actually endangered. And if they were, then they would be removed from those environments and, and taken into the system that we have discussed today. If they were not, then they continue to live where they are. Do you know how many were victims of sex trafficking? Fifteen. Fifteen of fifteen. About yeah. Fifteen. Of the nine arrests, how many were in Macon and how, and how many were in Metro Atlanta area? <laughs> we can get that for you. We'll get and that. Are, are you expecting to make any more arrests uh, through this uh, operation? Yeah, this operation has concluded. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we won't continue uh, to work with the agencies here. And, you know, as names pop up, we will go in and work and find those folks. What has happened as a result, I think uh, this is probably a, a very accurate statement, is as a result of working together, we are now very, very comfortable uh, working uh, together as, as a task force. So the people who actually worked uh, inside, who actually do the work like, like, like you saw a moment ago, uh, those are the folks who have established relationships with others inside the other agencies that are involved. So phone calls will be made. So when a critically missing child is identified, uh, there will be people working to go find that, that child. So that's one of the big benefits of things like this is we get to know each other better. Uh, I, I know that in this particular case there was some reluctance by at least one agency in working with the United States Marshal Service because of all the stuff that you hear, uh, which I consider to be false, but that you hear around that's happening around the country. Uh, but after working with this agency, it becomes very clear uh, that we're easy to work with, we're dedicated uh, to do these kinds of things, we want to do these kinds of things, and we're here to serve. Anyone who has you know, past experience with this, there was any kind of difference that the pandemic played on this? You know, was having more people at home uh, make it easier, harder, um, just kind of like with, with traffic flow? Was there any kind of difference on what this mission was like in a pandemic versus? Yeah. Well, I'll give you the uh, the 60,000 foot view, and then if anybody has any specific view about that, th feel free to add. Uh, the 60,000 foot view is yes, there there is a difference. Uh, it uh, the, the pandemic has slowed the pace of a number of things. Uh, for example, this particular operation actually was supposed to kick off in January of this year. Uh, I believe I got that right. And then we, we tried some things uh, up to March. And then in March, we had to shut down, sort of reassess how to do things. The United States Marshal Service is famous, in my view, for finding a way forward. So we had to sit and find a way forward for a lot of things, including this particular operation. So it was kicked back up in, in, in early August and uh, has now uh, concluded. Yes. Um, I know this is something relatively new to the U.S. Marshal Service, but um, having this new ability as of 2015, do you think that signals either a recognition of the fact that sex trafficking, and especially minor sex trafficking, is such a problem in the country, or do you think it's just uh, finding new ways to address it? I, I believe that it's uh, finding new ways to address it. I was a member of the George W. Bush administration before I became a member of the Trump administration. And in that administration, uh, we created what's called Project Safe uh, Neighborhoods. And, uh, sorry, excuse me, Project Safe Childhoods, in addition to Project Safe Neighborhoods. But front Project Safe Childhoods uh, was focused upon children. And what we saw at that time as exploitation of children, uh, primarily online and things of that sort, but it was happening in the sex trafficking world as well. So this is a, an expansion of the United States Marshal Service's authority. Over the last uh, three years, four years now, we have uh, expanded our capabilities and, and uh, expanded the, uh, uh, the, the people, the number of people and the resources to actually do this particular mission. You can expect to see us have a further expansion. 
the uh, chief, chief uh, Kirby is back there. She's shaking her head up and down. I've already talked to her this morning. I said, look, these are excellent numbers. I just want to see 10 times as much. So, uh, so you're going to see uh, more of these things happening. So we all we all appreciate what you guys are doing. I think you guys are doing a great job. I would uh, just like to know uh, when you um, help the, the younger kids and um, some of the kids that are going towards adulthood. Is there any additional resources to, so they don't fall back into the cracks of being exploited, like uh, maybe education, maybe housing as they kind of reach of age? Yeah. Any of the experts want to address that? Uh, I've got Chris Carr, uh, I, I will say that's where the partnerships come in, like with a Wellspring Living and others. And it's Wellspring just happened to be the state's recovery center. But the, the wraparound services that are needed for children or for the victims can be extensive. There's an evaluation that is done. I'd encourage you actually to, to reach out to Wellspring to learn about the specific details. But absolutely, each person is different. There may be physical needs, there may be mental health needs, there may be educational needs. But the rehabilitation side is critically important for exactly what you just said, so you don't fall back and you get the services that you need in order to, to uh, continue to move forward. And there's some great organizations that are doing it. Wellspring is one, and uh, I'd encourage you to, to look into the specifics of each one of those organizations. Well, uh, this is some of those you provide. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can get that for. You. For this specific operation, is there an age range for the children who are rescued? What was the age range? Uh, three to seven. Three to eighteen. Yeah, three, three to eighteen, three. Seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, so usually seventeen is is the upper limit for that. Uh, yeah, and, and as you might guess, uh, the older the children are, uh, the wider the the range of reactions to being rescued become. Okay, uh, not every uh, endangered child actually wants to be rescued, but you know we're the adults in the room, as they say, and uh, and so we need to exercise our responsibilities as adults and go and take those children as old as they are in terms of being a child, you know, up to 17, uh, take them from that environment and put them into a safer environment. Uh, the range of, of responses that children give to being rescued range from, as I, as I was told this morning, uh, a very, a, an interesting story, which I won't repeat here, but it, it, it's really quite simple, is uh, a child gets rescued, and uh, if that child uh, has been the victim of sexual abuse, sexual molestation and trafficking, uh, then many times that child will be reluctant to talk to the rescuers. Uh, they get into an environment where then they finally feel safe, and there may be a dozen people around them, and then they just begin to cry. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then they typically will begin to thank those who have rescued them uh, for taking the time and for never forgetting them, and hence the operation name, Operation Not Forgotten. Uh, there are others that are more difficult uh, who don't necessarily want to be rescued but have to be. And so the services that this gentleman mentioned over here uh, a minute ago become vitally important to, to adjusting that mindset and to having them recognize the danger that they were in and the, the value of their lives as human beings uh, really starts very early, but they're they're not maximizing that value if they stay in an environment where they are actually being, you know, pimped, if you will, and stuff like that. That is that's just terrible. But every so often, uh, we we will see people who don't want to come out of those environments, but who have to be brought out of those environments. These sex trafficking No, it's uh, sex trafficking is a is a significant crime in the United States. Uh, I'll bet you the bureau will tell you that it's 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 something that they are struggling with, and that uh, but it, uh, they're putting a major effort into it. Uh, it is not a onesie twosie type crime. It exists. We have to get in our own minds the idea that yes, sex trafficking occurs inside the United States of America, and it's something that we have to put more resources toward. Yes. Yeah, we heard the um, age range that you mentioned. How long do you have a range, an estimate for how long? They were missing, you know, from two months to, to four years with the, uh, the smallest uh, length of time wasn't with the longest. Yeah, that's a good question. Kevin. Uh, did I recall the, the longest I recall was probably about two years, uh, and some were a couple weeks, maybe.
Okay, so we have three to seventeen year olds oh. is the age range, and then um, a couple. A couple of weeks. Right. Two years. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Last question. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this is a worthwhile exercise, and thank you for coming. Take care of yourselves. Rescue missing Metro Atlanta children and reunite them with their loved ones is ending. Operation Not Forgotten stretches across our part of the state, hoping to provide answers for parents who have spent countless hours looking for their children. CBS 46's Brittany Edney joins us live tonight with the result of a Brittany, a two week mission. That's right, Sean. 39 missing children were found and nine arrests were made during this operation. The U.S. Marshals Service tells us that 26 of those children were rescued and the other 13, they were located and they were made sure to be safe. Well, CBS 46 cameras were there during this mission and our Megan Packer takes us inside Operation Not Forgotten. When you think of U.S. Marshals, you probably think of them out catching fugitives, but this was a very different mission and they gave CBS 46 access to their operation. She has a pickup order only. Uh, there's no active warrants for her. Our agency has uh, a very good reputation for finding people. No offenses on the backside. We're, we're going to have to cover that two and three corner. Okay. U.S. Marshals suit up to get to work. They're looking for someone on the run, but not a dangerous criminal. We're going after children. This is Operation Not Forgotten. And oftentimes these children don't understand that we're there to help them. A massive planning operation behind the scenes was carried out over the course of two weeks in the Atlanta and Macon areas earlier this month. CBS 46 was granted access as the marshals and several partner agencies worked to track down critically missing children. Darby Kirby is the chief inspector of the U.S. Marshals Missing Child Unit. The child is typically at risk for some type of crime of violence, crime of violence meaning child sex trafficking, uh, child exploitation, abuse, or there's an elevated risk factor to that child, meaning they might need medication or there may be mental health concerns. On this day, Kirby and her team found a 17-year-old girl who ran away from foster care. She was with a convicted felon who had a gun. They removed her from a potentially dangerous situation. We have to take on more of like a, a protector role, more of a guardian. We have to remove that child from that situation and then explain to her, hey, this is why we're here. We're here to help you. Kirby says many of the young people they're tasked with finding in these cases come from a life filled with trauma, including physical, emotional and sexual abuse, making it even more critical for them to get to safety where they can begin to heal. The U.S. Marshals Missing Child Unit has helped find more than 1,800 children in the last five years. And after this Georgia-based operation, they can add dozens more to their list. Megan Packer, CBS 46 News. What Megan just mentioned, we also learned today that the children were missing for various lengths of time, some just a few weeks, others up to two years. Reporting live in Atlanta, I'm Brittany Yedney, CBS 46 News.